I show everybody is present except for Judy Stauffer. She is absent. Let's stand and do the pledge. Hey, how are you doing? How are you doing? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Minutes for October 30th, 2017 special session. First. Move to accept the minutes for October 30th, 2017 special budget meeting. Second. Got a motion and a second to accept the minutes for October 30th, 2017 special session. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Now we're going to do the minutes for November 3rd. 2017 regular sessions. Should be first. Oh, should be the very start of the year. It's wrong on the agenda. It's on the agenda, it's wrong, but on the minutes, correct, yes. November 1st, 2017 regular session. Make a motion to accept the minutes. Make a motion. Second. And a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Citizens input. Come on, Carol. Well, the only thing I have to say, I'll say something tonight. We have a blood drive tomorrow. The American Red Cross is having one out at the United Methodist Church. And we really need blood. So it goes from 1.30 to 5.30. Let's see you tomorrow. Uh -huh, tomorrow. Right. Thank you, Carol. Mm -hmm. Can we get cookies? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> cookies and ham salads. Yeah. And ham salad sandwiches. You didn't bring all that to the army. <laughs> oh, just cookies. And if you haven't had your flu shot, Walmart will be there giving flu shots. Yeah. Thank you, Carol. Any more citizens input? All right, we're going to move on. Um, Marshall County Economic Development Corporation monthly report. Did we provide copies of the report to you guys in advance? No. Can we make copies at some point and we'll get them out? before the after the meeting. All right, so I will start off by uh, sharing with the council that this past month, MCDDC responded to one request for proposal, a request for proposal from IEDC, Indiana Economic Development Corporation. They are the, the main uh, business attraction and entity for the state. Uh, they are they lead the state effort to try to be in business in to, uh, Indiana. They provide a proposal, a request for proposal. They send out a particular project is looking for this type of, of, uh, of uh, community assets, asset being either land, building, whatever the case may be, real estate property, non real estate property. Uh, in this particular case, they were looking for a potential of a building, which would fall in line with the manufacturing center we just broke ground up. So we responded to that and we're just waiting to see how that will surface in terms of a reaction. I can tell you though, in light of um, the importance of, and we'll get down to some of the other stuff, but the importance of the groundbreaking one, I congratulate uh, Town Park is on, on breaking ground. Um, when you're talking about buildings and everything's on paper, uh, that's one thing. When financing loans have been pulled, plans 
been submitted and plans have been released, people are breaking ground, then that project is more reality. You get a lot more interest, you get a lot more people wanting to uh, investigate a little bit further. Uh, since the uh, groundbreaking, uh, we've had uh, a good response in terms of people asking questions. So that's always, the, I guess, the benefit of going through that particular process. It takes us a while to get there, but you know we're going to start to see more activity down the road. Manufacturing center, a couple of uh, noteworthy items is, uh, as you all uh, understand, notice of intent, which is actually a public notice. It's published in the paper saying MCEDC is going to be building building, and uh, that's a matter of record. That's that matter of record is part of a series of steps prescribed by state law that have to be done before this packet called a site plan gets submitted to the uh, Department of Homeland Security that actually does the, the release of the construction plans. So um, once we get through that environmental review, um, uh, that was uh, completed on the 27th, the NOI on the 25th, um, uh, gets us to a point where we had the um, uh, we had the release on the foundation and grade permit that happened uh, the first, and then on the second, we got the building plans released as well. So those are actually saying, if you're ready to start pushing dirt, you can. And uh, permits uh, at that point can be pulled at the county. It's online permitting, and those things have already been done. So we're well on our way. My hope is that uh, we will with the weather letting up a little bit, we should see mobilization of heavy equipment and start to be pushing dirt here pretty quick. Um, groundbreaking ceremony, I want to talk a little bit about, I uh, don't want to mention too much more about that or cover that, but um, I want to give you an update on the plaque, uh, conversation with the, uh, Adam Marsh is our engineer, and Jamie visited with them as well regarding the plaque. The plaque, uh, is the legal document that, or the replat, that separates the properties. Property being the lot that the uh, building sits on, and the rest of the lot that, is, uh, that will be retained by the town. Uh, a lot of specifics that go into that setbacks, public right-of-ways, easements, and, and all the above. So uh, we should see the first, first initial draft of the plat that yet this week. Um, and uh, I know that Jamie, when he talked to Adam Marsh, um, the conversation is, in terms of the process, when is it best to do all the above? Well, we separated the plans for construction purposely from the replat and the planning process. While the uh, survey, topographical survey was done, we need that for elevations. One foot increments tells us how we're going to balance our site and everything like that. They still have to go boundary survey, and that has been on paper done. But once we uh, see that on, on a draft, we go through, much like engineering plans, we go in and see if they got the direction from us the right way. Jamie's had a hand in that because uh, they want to put the, the utility uh, poles back uh, 15 feet. Uh, something like that. Mm -hmm. So all these things matter in terms of, of the plat. We're going to get there as quickly as we can. We just need to be a little bit patient in going through that process. Once we get the plat, we'll submit uh, plat, uh, a replat, and that goes through the regular process here at the uh, town uh, through planning commission, um, and then they have a public hearing, and then it's adopted, and I think you've gone through that. Once, it, once it's been adopted officially, then it can be recorded at the county. And now it's at city boundaries for lots for the building versus all the rest of the property. So hopefully it answers any questions that you might have with regard to that. County development for the future, we had the meeting today. Uh, process, uh, the process of going through that is um, MCDC staff sits down and we have a tracking sheet of projects that you guys deem are your priorities. 
we track that in terms of goals and objectives and steps that have been completed. Once again, uh, the next meeting is February the, remind me, 15th? Do you remember that date? I think so. February the 15th, we want to invite council to participate in that. Uh, Jamie, Doug here to the side. Doug. Doug. Sorry, Doug. It's okay. Too many names. They were there today. We welcomed them. I'd like to, I'd like to hear uh, what you guys thought of the meeting in terms of all the, all the, uh, all the discussion and the uh, yeah. value of that. Pretty good? Yep. So, um, aside from the county development for the future, focus group meetings have been had. Uh, focus group meeting, uh, there was a series of three. And Commissioner Overmeyer, which we want to, when he's around, give him a pat on the back for our leading the charge on uh, some of that uh, uh, reversal on J-turn uh, uh, decision process we want to remind him that he did a we want to remind ourselves that he did a good job but he came he approached me about half a month ago and he said i think we need to start looking at branding the county there's a lot of good things going on not one here in orange but elsewhere uh, but how do we get that message on now so focus group meetings i know suzanne attended one down in Calvert. uh mark Umba attended one in, in uh, and so uh, it wasn't a big group of people that came to the table. It was very specific. And we tried to, uh, while there was maybe 15 uh, plus at each meeting, when you combine all the numbers together, that's quite a few people, about 45 at the end of the day, sat down and started giving impressions about Marshall County, where the good thing, what makes Marshall County special. So uh, the first week in, or the first meeting that the commissioners will have in December, there will actually be a proposal put to them, a uh, big idea, big idea. As you recall, did your video here in Argus. They're gonna do some branding uh, for the county as well. So the focus group meetings, we had several of those. Uh, and then I'll just, uh, uh, I think I will stop there and answer any questions that uh, council might have with regards to NCDC activities. Congratulations on the conference. Thank you, Jerry. Old business, <clears throat> excuse me, attorney report. I'll maybe talk a little bit more on fire contracts and our primary election ordinance down the road. The only thing I really have to let you know about to keep you up to speed on is the the issue that uh, Mark Vanderbilt talked about last week with the Redevelopment Commission and the lots of colonial estates, we're still looking at uh, an avenue, at least a process or a mechanism, how to do something like that. Although I know there's some other interest now with redevelopment, um, or I should say with those lots uh, and the developer. But we're still going to, I've got an email out, I've got phone messages out, and I'm not getting a lot of contact back. I don't know if that's for fear of other people not uh, exactly knowing exactly how to handle this as well but uh, at the end of the day I'm not getting a lot of response but still pushing just so you're aware of that that's really all I have to report thank you Derek I move to accept the attorney report Any motion? second and second to accept the attorney report all in favor say aye <coughs> aye, aye. Mm -hmm. motion carries Fire contract agreement. Did you say you wanted to chime in on this? You one? want me to address this or kind of talk about this? I'm happy to do that. Um, and it, it's my understanding that this fire services agreement between the town and the volunteer fire department um, was signed by the town back in October. The, the problem with the agreement that was in place was that there was one area that needed some work about the age of the equipment. Um, another issue with that agreement was the dates when it was to be effective. 
Um, the way that contract was written, the, the dates to be effective was going to be January 1 of 2017, so it was going to be retroactive. Um, the council approved that, but when it got to the fire department and they had their meeting, they voted to not approve that because of, I think, the retroactivity was the big issue uh, with that. So, we don't have a new agreement. We do have an existing agreement. It's a one that was signed back in, I think it was 2010. Um, so everything, there's still something in place, but to make the changes that we want to have made, um, we're going to have to change the effective date to January 1 of 18. Um, there's also the issue of the equipment and the age. I made changes to the fire services agreement, and I think there was one other matter that George wanted to check into regarding workman's comp uh, insurance coverage for the members of the fire department before this all gets nailed down and signed. Now, what that also means is that the townships will also have to, in essence, approve and ratify this agreement through the agreement that we have with the townships. So they're going to have to take another look at this because this contract that really is an exhibit to their agreement is going to be changed a little bit. So I don't know that George has heard anything from Mr. Miller yet, so I don't know that we're ready to do a whole lot yet this evening. Is that accurate then, George? Yes, that's accurate. Okay. But that's, that's where this stands, and that's the reason we've got these two changes. And I think you all got my email. Yeah. Uh, I pointed out where those changes were so you didn't have to scour the document. But other than that, it's what we signed back in October. But we're close, but not quite there. Fire department signs first. Okay. Um, they, they can if they were so interested to do so, yeah. But there's still the issue that George wants to check into that probably is there. They want to know about no, that. I understand that, but last time we had the town was signed first, and then it yeah. went to the fire department. It doesn't matter who signs okay. first. All right. Thanks, Derek. Again, right, we're going to move to board openings. We have Marshall County Tourism Planning Commission, Park Board, and Redevelopment. I did receive a letter for the Park Board, but we're going to keep this open for 30 days before we make a decision to accept other applications first. Can I ask you a question about the Park Board? Uh -huh. Nobody's really been able to answer this, and I've asked for probably 10 years. Uh, I've been told you have to live in town, and I'm also told you have to, that that's not the case. You have to own property in town. And if you have to own property in town, does that mean if you own a cemetery plot, does that make you own property in town? Because it is deeded to you. Um, I'm just curious what the what the eligibility of that, because I tried to get on, some, or on the park board 10 years ago, and I was told I can't because I didn't live in town. But you have a member on the board now that doesn't live down. And I was always told it was my responsibility to find the rules. And I don't believe that's true. I believe it once the question's been asked, it's their responsibility to provide me all the information I need. Derek might be able to answer this one. Hi, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm looking at the cheat sheet that I kind of have for the Argus Park Board. Um, I don't see anything about a residency requirement, but I'm looking at a cheat sheet, not the actual statutes, and it's basically most of that stuff's found at 3610.3, if you want to have some fun. Um, if the council wants me to take a look at that, I mean, I can. Um, I would like to think that if that was a requirement, that I'd have it in here because that's kind of significant. Um, I see things like that uh, you can't have more than two members of the same political party uh, on the park board, staggered terms, meet at least quarterly, four members, uh, so on and so forth. But I don't see anything in here about being a resident of the town. Could that be something that's particular in one of our ordinances? I'm not familiar with that. And what made me speak of that was all of the new park is in Green Township and the town. Now, Green Township doesn't pay taxes because we've never been asked to pay taxes on that part. And it just kind of seems funny that you would have it in a township that no one's allowed to be in, supposedly. 
but I don't want on the board, thank you very much. I'm just asking the question for anyone that might want on the board. You got me confused on the Green Township, Walnut Township, Town, and the boundary. The, the boundary line is Kenilworth Road, okay. Pond Street. So all that park is in Green Township and the town. But yet you can't have someone from Green Township on the board because they don't live in town. But it doesn't say that. It's not spelled out real good. So. Might be something you guys want to look into. I can apparently there is something on it, so I can have Lisa find that for me. Something else you can do, and I can read it up for my own pleasure. But I just know before I was told I couldn't be on it because they don't live in town. Right. But somebody else that lived in Green Township could be on it because they own property in town. That's part. So then that opens up a whole new can of worms. Oh, yeah, maybe thirty-two statutes. There. I don't know. Let me go home and pull up my archives. <laughs> after 11 years on it, I don't remember everything. Yeah, I'm saying it was. Uh, I'm saying it was not long after you got on. So I'm happy to give you a copy of this too. Though. Okay, that's, 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 yeah, I'm, I'll take any any and all information. Uh, She's sure. looking at the statute, but again, you know, a chapter of Indiana Code contains who knows how many sections. Yeah, it could be four, it could be 37. Who knows? Um, so I don't know exactly how many there are without really sitting down and looking at it. Um, but again, it's, it's kind of cited here on this cheat sheet that I've got. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you run into the difference of the town and the city being different because of population. <clears throat> Same with the cemetery, so it's not just... Y'all, I know it's big, but <laughs> there's stuff that y'all should yeah. know because you're pointing people to it, so... I'm not trying to get you to buy a hard time. Have, <laughs> that's all right, and we'll get to the bottom of it. Well, normally, we'll I have it all my out. cheat sheet when we appoint members. Derek and I usually go over it. Just bring up a whole new life question. That's all. So. You guys don't have enough on your plate. I'm just telling more. At the outset, Doug, I don't see any requirements about residency in the town. I didn't. When I looked at the state statute, I didn't see anything. Yeah. But then I didn't know if the town had something that, you know, but it's, they have jurisdiction, so. It's very hard to find members of that are all not of the same political party. So. Well, George has just volunteered. He said he's going to look it up. So. I, I heard right that. Here. So. He's, he's, he's going to research it. it. <laughs> he's got to research it all. Okay. So. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> so keep what you have, and I'll get it from you. And I'll get it from you. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any other oh, business? I was going to mention about the J turns and I was going to mention about the groundbreaking, but Jerry already did all that, so. New business. Ordinance 2017 26, the primary election. And you want to chime in on this one too? Hey, I mean, I don't. I'll just explain what's going on here. This is something that Lisa did the hard work and she got a draft of an ordinance from somebody downstate. Um, what this is doing, it's eliminating the, the town convention uh, that we normally would use to nominate candidates that would run for the general election for a particular political party. What this is doing then is just creating a primary election. Um, for those candidates of those two major political parties. The thing that is kind of interesting, and you wouldn't know this unless you really read the, read the ordinance and read the statutes, but once you set this into place, you can't change this methodology for a period of 12 years. Um, so once you, if you decide to do this, you're gonna live with this for the next 12 years and uh, not be able to go back, unless statutes change. I was on the phone with Deb Vandermark, who's the clerk, county clerk, and she just wanted me to bring a couple of things to your attention, that if it is not a municipal primary election year, well, even if it is, you, you, we pay a portion of the elect, 
to hold the election. She sent me the bill that the town paid for in 2015, the last time we paid for an election, and it was $1,901. So she wants you to be aware that by doing this, any time that the town holds an election, you will have a bill to go with that. When you have a convention, the political party, like when I ran and we had a Republican convention, uh, that is paid for by the Republican Party, and the Republican Party did that. So that is something that you have to kind of take into consideration, that there is a cost, but I really do think that for people that work second shift and stuff like that, you have to have a way for them to get their voice heard also. Second, thirds, you know, stuff like that. So that's the reason. And most of the towns around us do not have conventions anymore. They, went, they all pushed the primary based on that fact that they wanted to give their constituents more of a voice like Palmer and stuff. So would the primary be then in November, just like <laughs> May? May. May. In May. Mm -hmm. And then the regular elections would be held in November. Okay. So these would be... They, so we would have one May, of, if we signed this, we would have one May of 2018 then? Yes. Mm -hmm. Or two of our members. If, if more members, if we get more people that run, mm -hmm. If there's only the two of them and there are two spots, there's no primary. Those are your, you know, but if right. you get four, then you have to have an election. <clears throat> okay. I like that idea because it opens it up to more people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of the 20 or 30 that show up. I just wanted to make sure that you knew exactly yeah. what was going to happen, you know. And sometimes there have been ball games. Right. Yeah. Which challenging. That's why there was just a handful there, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why people can come in any time and I make a motion to uh, suspend the rules and pass ordinance two thousand seventeen dash twenty six primary election on all three readings. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules and pass ordinance number 2017-26 um, nominating candidates for town office primary elections on all three readings. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next up is employee health insurance. I didn't see nothing in here about that. There is nothing right now. I wanted to give you an update because it is November. <laughs> um, we did not get final numbers until just this past week. IPEP was negotiating with the Anthem over our numbers. Um, Greg finally emailed me and said that he has final numbers and it's looking like a 20% increase which is um, a little bit higher than we were anticipating. We were looking, we were hoping for a 10 to 15% increase. It's a little bit higher, but um, we did fill out a census and we are getting quotes from United Healthcare and from Anthem themselves, instead of just IPEP, who uses Anthem. Um, Greg said that across the board, health insurance has kind of gone up about 15 to 20 percent and he is going to get us um, those quotes probably by the next meeting but I wanted to kind of fill you in on what was going on he's also going to get us a quote if we raised our deductibles 
what that might entail. Um, I just wanted to give you guys kind of a heads up on thinking about what you want to do. So. That's funny because we just went through all this work and my rates went down to what I paid by $20 a week wow. from better coverage through United Healthcare through a third party. Okay, and I'm getting a quote yeah, from you Yeah, but I'm just so. saying, you know, that you talk about 20% increase. Yeah, it's well, funny. but you got to realize, George, how low did our insurance go last time? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we mm -hmm. dropped significantly. The only reason that you're not seeing it in your paperwork is because we had such good insurance that more of our employees switched over to our insurance because our deductibles are unheard of low. Mm -hmm. When I went to the hospital, they looked up our, my deductibles and they were like, we haven't seen deductibles like this. You know, 250 for a single and, you know, 500 for a family. You know, that's before the 80-20 jumps in, you know. So we had a really good plan, but we knew it might only last a year. Um, and that's what we're looking at. So I am trying to still get quotes. That's you know. deductibles for that one. Our deductibles. I'm going to say they're 4500 for family. and. Well, no, 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 no it was no, no, lower here. than that. I think it was, I don't know. I'm talking about the deductible before the 8020, what you have to pay. Oh, okay before the 80-20 kicks in, but we've still got, what is it, 3,000 for a family? Something like that. Because I looked it up for it you one low. day, and I think it's 3,000 for a family, and it was like half that for singles. Okay. So. Just letting you know. Keep us informed. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm still looking. Still under new business. I have a letter here from Chairman of Discover Argus. Huh? I said, what is that? It's Judy Richards. <laughs> uh, it says, hello from the New Business Committee. We are writing the Argus Town Council to ask permission to use the Argus name in our new committee name, email, Facebook group, and all letterhead from this date forward. If this is okay, please let us know at your earliest convenience. Thank you in advance for all your help with getting this started. This is uh, dated November 8th, 2015. So what exactly is Discover Argus Indiana? What is your purpose? It's a business, the community business group committee. We're not even a group yet, we're a committee. And it's to help boost business downtown throughout Argus just to kind of let everybody know what is down here because believe it or not I didn't realize there was that many businesses down here. there's a lot and a lot I'd go out of town for because I didn't know they were here so it's just to help it to help let everybody know that there is more business down here There you go, Jim. I ask you questions. And draw more people to come. <laughs> I don't have a problem with it myself. I move that we go ahead and let them discover Argus, Indiana, use the word Argus in their, their names for their emails. We have a motion. Second. And a second to go ahead and let discover Argus, Indiana, use the name Argus in any of their emails, committee name, slogans, Facebook groups, whatever it be. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Any other new business? Last year, 12 days of Christmas, did right. you guys put that on? So we put it together, but we decided it's better, and I was told 
some of the business owners are wanting to take that over. So that's better. RDC thinks that's a better thing that business owners take that over. It's not really a redevelopment function. I do have a lot of stamps. A lot of stamps? Well, the 12 days at Christmas. Stamps. Oh, okay. So who do I get with to find out how you guys arranged that the last time? How did we arrange it? Mm -hmm. To get them put up. I'm not climbing the poles. <laughs> Lisa had a lot to do with it. <laughs> no, the lights will go up. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. lights will be up. That the lights were, <laughs> yeah, the I'm lights were separate up. from the contest. It just okay. happened to it go together. It was the contest that was okay. Right. Yeah. The lights will go up every year. Yeah. So will they still light like one light at a time, or are they going to be all twelve lit at once? They were all twelve lit at once, once last before. time. Okay. Yeah. But um, if you want us to put it on our Facebook page or anything, you can get me little briefings of the businesses, or I can talk to you about it. After. So we're going to do the lighting times. I think we should. We do it every year. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good for the time. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and do the 2017 Christmas lighting contest with the same criteria as the last years, with the same prizes. Have to look it up. As long as Jim was willing to, there we go. Judge, I was going to do residents and business both. Well, I think we did last year both, didn't we? That's what I so, asked. Yeah, I would do them both. In that motion. Thank you. We got a motion. Second. And a second to go ahead and do the 2017 Christmas lighting contest as a contest as the same rules and criteria as last year businesses and residents. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Department head reports. Police department. You should have my report. <coughs> For the month, the police department had nine criminal arrests, 22 traffic arrests, we had 14 criminal investigations, um, one ordinance ticket that we wrote, which I was also told by the, uh, had a phone call from the auditor today, um, the police department was getting a little over 5000 for the town and court costs for the ordinance, court costs that were turned in, so thanks Derek. Pretty good. And that's all I got, oh, which that's how we paid for the, the last truck too, so we'll put that, so. right. So that's all I have. Looks like you guys have been busy. <laughs> Going on. Wow, I mean, there's a lot. It looks like everybody's been really, it's really nice. <laughs> 352 court, code enforcements for the year. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it, it, honestly, though, if, if you go back, if you, if you check everything, it's, the numbers are about the same as they have been. So it's not like everything's always it's comparable to how it always is. Maybe a little bit more. Thanks, Corey. You're welcome. Thank you. Utilities. I have my report in your packet. Um, we've been looking into the Westview Court drainage issue. Uh, we found a couple of tiles out there in the park. Um, but I think we finally found the one we've been looking for. So now we got to get it. It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there was several in there, and you know nothing marked or anything. So right. we're trying to figure it out as we go, but. Um, it, it's coming. So Did you open up any more tiles? We opened up one and it, it seemed to help drain a part of the field and, and even some of the pond and stuff. So I think Why we found the one now that's hooked into the pond. Uh, we're going to be working with the county to get that fixed and we're going to try to do some stuff ourselves so we can get it back open. But um, we, we met with the engineer on that and he gave us a proposal and what what we need to do to fix it. So um, we're kind of on hold right now until we figure out if this tile is even going to work or not. Mm -hmm. um, but if but if it does, then I think that's probably the way to go. Get them to engineer it all, and then we'll have a plan of what we need to do. And with them doing that, um, they're offering it. It's a guaranteed fix. 
you know, so it'll work when it's done. We won't have any issues. Uh, the other thing we've been working with is Adam Marsh. Um, I should have the drawings and plans next week for that too. We met with them once, we made some changes on it, so hopefully we can get that next week or so. Then we'll, um, I'll get you some numbers on what we're going to have in the water and sewer to put all that in. That's about all I have. Any questions for me? Jim, can you make sure that that's getting in there, that there is doing something down with Westview Court Ranch? Right. <laughs> yeah, because they can pull print. Well, there's, pe there's there. people that, you know, that all they want to do is complain about it. And there's no other way they're going to find out if you don't put it in the paper. So, yeah. I mean, you can tell that something has been done. Though. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I kind of watch that pretty close. Yeah. It's right there in my front yard. But it's really draining a lot better than it has in a long time. Well, and you, you really notice it in the park. Yeah, I can well, tell. I, 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 is right. down real quick, so that it, helps it, Western it, Port, but it's not the. It poured down a couple of days, you know, whenever it did last week, whenever, but, and it didn't stay near as long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Boat, working on it. My boat does deep and hardly float, but that's not going to work. Thank you, Jamie. Thanks, Jamie. Tell Mike I really like his report. Yeah. Did you do that for him? No. <laughs> I told him to give me some lessons actually. We're going to move on to fire now. Yeah, my report there. Uh, Digger 4 was sent out and it has came back prepared. Uh, it's good. Um, we're coming Tuesday to look at 3. It's got our engine 6 backs into it occasionally. Uh, the hole in the hood there. We we're talking with him. Well, you've seen it six inches there. Yeah, sometimes they don't get the break as soon as they should. So that's going to go out and get the hood repaired on it as well by the next month, probably. So that's why we need to talk about extending that hood. You guys are too cramped. And this is costing us money. <clears throat> and then um, also, we did receive our spreader, it is in service as well. So the brand new. The the um, turnout gear, the washer, so it's the extractor for extractor. It's a wrong model. Dryer was wrong. Oh, dryer was wrong. So have they replaced it yet? Coming in uh, Tuesday. Yeah, this next week. Tuesday. <clears throat> They're going to change that bit then too. Mm, Jamie's taking care of that. I would hope. But. <laughs> Are you going to run it up? Yeah. Of, okay. We're going to do it with Yeah. To start, so. We should have just done it from the start. Exactly. And you guys, you knew what you were doing. You should have just done it and it be taken care of. So it'll be all up and working in by the end of this month. The building, the room looks real nice. The conference room. So thank yeah. you on that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I want to let everybody know that. One of our firemen, of course, you know, he ended up, he's, he has cancer. And this was his project, and he was kind of off of it for a while when he was going through his treatments. Um, he's doing good with remission right now, and he's taking it over again. I mean, he was down there, and yeah. he's doing what he can on it. So um, even with all the, the bad luck that he has had right now, he's still um, active very active in the department. So he didn't just you know, get sick and roll over and abandon his post as far as being a fireman for over 30 years. So I just want to say that he's been working on this. So there's still people out there who do care. Yeah, to take it to heart. Any EMS report? I'll tell you that next month. All right, and talk to we're going to move on. Claims, 1256. I move to accept department head report. Oh, yeah, we got <laughs> Second. We got two seconds. Yeah. Uh, this second. Maybe. All in favor say aye. 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 That's all right. And that gets so quick. Claims, 1256 through 1342. The total docket for November the 15th 
is $340,930.57. The top five claims are as follows. Number one is IMPA at $167,375.50. Number two is payroll number 22 at $35,633.64. Number three is First Source Bank for the street sweeper payment for $16,668.59. That is an annual payment. Um, Anthem Health Insurance at $16,227.34. And Republic Services at $12,000. $113.64. The top five claims total $248,018.29 and represent 72% of the total docket. I move to approve claims total 56 through 1342. Second. And a motion is second to accept claims 1256 through 1342. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. All right. Aye. aye. Motion carries. A motion to adjourn. Look, I want to throw this out to the newspaper real quick. I'm, I'm going to jump back to this extractor dryer thing for the fire department. Uh, Bourbon's getting one through a grant. Um, and it's ironic that, the, that the, our firemen started this process for us didn't know he had cancer until after he started this and they're finding out the cancer is probably one of the major killers of firemen right now and so i want to throw this out to not just argus suburban but the whole county every community that may read the paper or watch this on tv that when the firemen or the towns are talking about a washer dryer for their fire department it's it's more than just that it's to keep from bringing things home uh, to help keep us safe. Uh, I mean, every every uh, department, even like our electric department, every, everybody has their own uh, things they have to worry about. But so when you hear washer, dryer, extract, or whatever, don't just think of it as your household washer, dryer. There's a there's a real purpose and need for this in every community. So just support that. This thing's huge too. That's all I wanted. So thank you. Motion to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.